Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Give God praise for our choir. Come on. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Thank you, choir. We appreciate your ministry. Brother Keith, thank you for your leadership. To my brothers and my sisters who give us the opportunity to worship with us online, thank you. As we come to your house, we bless you and we pray that God's grace meet you at the point of your need. And those of you who are here, what a privilege to be in the sanctuary. This, do you realize first service of the 2023 here? If you've never been here, come on, somebody. Yeah. This is great. It looks good. It feels good to be in the sanctuary for our traditional service. You know, we borrow space for the contemporary service at 9.30. We love those folks, but we love our sanctuary. Come on. <laughs> now imagine, my brothers and my sisters, if you ever see somebody wearing a yellow coat, a heavy yellow coat, have you ever seen somebody wearing a yellow coat? Can I get a witness? Oh, okay. Maybe you have never seen one? Can you imagine, picture yourself, someone wearing a yellow coat? And sometimes you are wondering if they match. What type of color was the shoes? Was the shirt or uh, came together? How was it? When, when you do that, you are using your imagination. You know, many times when we talk about imagination, we think about imagination in the negative way. Many times, for instance, we are even afraid because in Matthew, Jesus is warning us and say, if a person look at a woman and have some ideas, lust after her in their imagination, they have already committed the sin of adultery. I know if God will project my imagination over there, I'm not going to stand here. Now, I know you may try to play holy on me. If God projects yours either, you're not going to sit there. Now, you know, many times when we think about imagination, we see imagination in the negative way. But I'm here to remind you that scripture says in the book of Romans chapter 12 that we are to be renewed in our mind. So the renewing of the mind is also the renewing of our imagination. This is why David, when he sinned against God, what happened? It all start in our imagination. It start in our mind. We, we paint pictures of things. Can you remember how our imagination always put us in trouble because you think about something, you begin to paint a picture inside, and you end up acting on it. Why? Because there is power in the imagination. Your imagination is your creative ability. God has given us imagination, and imagination is our creative ability. What do you imagine? You end up doing it. Now, you see, David saw Bathsheba. Bathsheba was taking a shower, and David abused his power. He took someone else's wife, and then later on, when he heard about the pregnancy, he wanted to kill the man, the husband. He all conceived all these evil thoughts in his imagination, how they are going to take the husband of Bathsheba and kill the husband. So he thought about all these things. So when the man of God came to David and said, you have sinned against God, David recognized his sin and he said to the Lord, give me a new heart. Give me a new heart. Our imagination has been corrupted, but thanks be to God, because we have been redeemed. The redemption also affects our imagination. Now, mind you, nothing has ever been done in the world without imagination. We use imagination. Somebody one day imagined about transportation. Somebody had an idea of transportation. This is how we move from a bicycle to a car, then from a car to an airplane. Somebody had an idea, an imagination. So imagination is not just something of the new age philosophy, but I want you to know that imagination is a God-given ability. Now, we are saying in the year 2023, God says, I have a plan for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. That is God's part. 
We cannot just sit and claim God's plan if we don't do our part. Because God is not going to do for us what we can do for ourselves. Imagination is our ability to create. Imagination is your creative ability. What you imagine, my brothers and my sisters, expand because your imagination help you. You paint a picture, image making, image making. Your imagination help you paint a picture, a picture of what is not but can be achieved. It is important because what you imagine determines what you believe. And what you believe determines how you receive. We say one of the things that we are going to do in the year 2023 is to let our hope shape our future, not our hurts. Because you see, there is this spiritual truth. Whatever you focus on, expand. Whatever you expand, you focus on expand whatever you put your energy it will come back to you now you know if you carry the hurts of last year for instance if someone asks you you lend money to somebody they borrow money from you and they did not pay if you focus on that hurt what will happen it will determine your behavior you will say i don't trust people anymore I'm losing confidence in people. Why? Because you're allowing your hurts to shape your future. We need to let our hurts go and build the future. Let our hopes build our future. Let our hope shape our future. Now, when we talk about hopes, we talk about positive imagination. What is hope? Hope is positive imagination. You got to hope for something. Stand, live your life from the perspective of hope. Hope is positive imagination. When somebody say, I have hope, it means they are having positive imagination. And positive imagination, it is creative visualization. We got to be able to visualize, to see the possibilities of God. Oh, come on, my brothers and my sisters. Visualization help us paint a picture of what it is. Now, listen, the Bible says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we ask or imagine. Oh, imagine. We talk a lot about asking in prayer, but I want to emphasize this aspect of imagination because your imagination is also your prayer. When you pray, you got to imagine something. What is it that you want to become? If I'm praying for healing, then you imagine what it looks like to be healed, to be okay. You imagine, you position yourself and you throw yourself to your prayer, into the direction of your prayer. What is it that you are imagining for your family? What's your imagination when you pray for your family? My brothers and my sisters, imagination is very important. We must imagine, use our imagination, because you see, we paint a picture. It helps us even in our real life. How does life look like when you are married? What makes your marriage strong? People talk about compatibility. Someone told me, I'm going to divorce because we are not compatible. No, my brothers and my sisters, there is no such thing as compatible, co compatibility. We will never be compatible because we are different people. What strengthens marriage is maturity. It's not compatibility. We will always be incompatible. For instance, Men always talk straight. Women talk in circle. <laughs> now, you come home, you say, baby, what do we have for dinner? That's the question. What do we have for dinner? And here she answered, oh, you know what? I went to Walmart. I wanted to buy chicken. And then when I got to Walmart, 
My friend told me that Kroger has a sale on chicken. Then I went to Kroger to buy the chicken. When I go to Kroger, I met Catherine. Catherine is pregnant again. I don't know about that woman, why she's getting pregnant again. Come on, the problem was not Catherine pregnancy. The problem was what do we have for dinner? Just say chicken. That's what the question was, what do we have? So there will never be compatibility. My brothers and my sisters, is maturity. Now, when we use our imagination, paint a picture in your mind. Just paint a picture in your mind. How do you want others to treat you? How do you want others to treat you? And then when you paint that picture, if it is a negative picture, if it is Ugly. then you ask God to help you change the picture. Because as you paint the picture in your imagination, how I want to be treated in my relationship, that's how you are going to treat your spouse. Can you imagine if what I want, the way I want to be treated, if this is how I give to my wife, and she also reciprocates at that level, come on, what a joy in marriage. Paint a picture. How do you want to treat others? Because the way you treat others speaks about your relationship with God. The picture you have as you paint that picture of how I want to be treated, this is how you are to treat others. Paint a picture. Your brothers and your sisters if the picture you paint is ugly or unkind, ask God, help me change the picture. Our imagination, my brothers and my sisters, become the reality that we experience. We make image, image making. Whatever you focus on, expand. Whatever you imagine, expand. So this year, we are going to use our imagination. My brothers and my sisters, we are going to use our imagination. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is rich, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever brings peace, Whatever is admirable, whatever is of good reputation, whatever is excellence, let these things, let these things be the center of your mind. In other words, let these things be the subject of your imagination. And God says, the word of God says God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we ask and imagine. What is that you imagine when you pray for your church? What is it that you imagine? You got to paint a picture. I think women will understand well what I'm speaking. Mothers will understand well what I'm speaking. Because when a woman is pregnant, she knows she's carrying a baby. Husband, we don't just know it. We just see the transformation of the wife. But the women knows they are carrying a baby. And then when they're about to deliver that baby, they have already painted a picture. They know there is life inside of me. And the doctor will say to them, push. And they are pushing for life. They are bringing new life. You know, when my son was born, when the doctors were saying to Odette, push, and I'm there in the corner, I'm speaking in tongue, I'm praying, it was not enough, my prayer. And the doctors are saying, push, and Odette is pushing. And then when Emgrach came out, I shouted in the corner, the baby! And my wife looked at me and said, fool, what were you thinking was inside there? <laughs> it was a baby all this time. There was a baby inside there. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, we must paint that picture of what is not yet. Because imagination is our eyes for the inside, the soul. 
You know, with our physical eyes, we see what is real. But God has given us our spiritual eyes, emotion, our will, our personality inside, our imagination. Nothing will ever be done. Nothing has ever been done without imagination. What type of life you want to live? Now, paint a picture. This year, what type of life I want? What type of relationship I want? What is it that I need to do to have peace within me and become an extension of peace in my family? What is it that I need to do? Paint a picture of what is not that can be achieved. When you pray for the church, you know, you are the church, I am the church. The church is not these pews, it's not the building. We are the church. And then if it's not done, it's not the preacher's fault. It is my fault. When you are here, God is giving you ideas what type of pictures that you are painting for the future of our church. Because whatever imagination you have about this church, that's how it's going to be. If you paint a picture in your mind of a place that you only visit at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, that's what it is. So you will only show up here at 11 and by 12 you disappear. Whatever takes place here during the week is none of your business. That's the picture you have. That's the imagination that you have. But if you have this place in mind as a place, the house of the Lord, an extension of God's presence in the world, you get involved. You get involved. You get to know your brothers and your sisters because we are going to share eternity. Come on, somebody. Look at me. You will see me in heaven. I will be there. Yes. We are going to spend eternity why do I know we are going to recognize each other? Because in the bosom of Abraham, the Bible says the rich man recognized Lazarus. And he said, Father Abraham, would you please ask Lazarus to bring me a little bit of water because I'm thirsty. Then he began to plead with Abraham and say, would you please send someone to tell my brothers and my sisters not to come here. We will recognize each other. You will see me there, and I will see you there. Now, if we are going to spend eternity together, we just need to get along here on earth. We have no choice. Ah, you did not choose me, I did not choose you. But the Lord has chosen us and put us together. What a celebration. We are brothers and sisters. We share in the covenant. The blood of the Lamb cleanses us from all unrighteousness. God has given us God's DNA. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. Come on. I'm excited about the family of God. It is bigger than you can imagine. Imagination. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask and imagine. Let your imagination be a prayer before the Lord. Imagine. Imagine that miracle. See it. Imagine that divine intervention. See it. See that miracle in your life. See that transformation. Imagine God answering your prayer. God moving in your direction. Come on, imagine that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let all of God's people say it, amen. amen. Reverend Amanda will come and lead us as we conclude our service.